Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I am going to do my first craft podcast. Um, I am excited to show you all the crafty things I've been working on. Um, just to give you a little background, I have been knitting most of my life. Um, and then past few years I took up quilting um, and just a little more sewing in general. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a left-handed knitter. Um, which I may do a little, uh, like a little mini series on YouTube, um, for people who are interested in like certain left-handed knitting techniques and stitches and whatnot. Uh, people tend to over confuse that, um, when it doesn't need to be confusing. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to get into it. So this is kind of just my first podcast. Just want to show you some recent, uh, FOs, some recent um, projects that I've been working on, um, and then I'll show you some little acquisitions that I've made too um, from my trip back in Dallas, where I'm from. So uh, yeah, so the first one, this is um, not super recent, but I love it because he's part of my fall decor. <laughs> this was a mystery knit along, um, a mystery gnome along, I guess by Imagined Landscapes, I believe is her Ravelry handle. I don't, for the life of me, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but um, she's big designer for gnomes, uh, super cute patterns. And um, back home in Dallas, I used to work at McKinney Knittery and they had a uh, knit along via Zoom um, that went on, gosh, I guess it was mid-August. Yeah, so, um, didn't know what the pattern was gonna be, just had to pick out four colors. And so I wanted a fall theme. So I've got like that rusty red, a burnt orange, the um, creamy uh, gray, and then brown. I didn't know that we'd be mar mar marling the yarn throughout. Um, so it turned out great. And I love his little lollipop hat here. Uh, super fun. First time I've ever really made any sort of like plushie like this. So learned a lot and I'm gonna look at some of her other patterns to uh, plan out some Christmas gnomes because um, I currently have him in my fall centerpiece on my dining table. Um, I'll try to insert a photo here somewhere. Um, so yeah. Okay, next up. I have been working on Christmas stockings for my boyfriend and I. Um, this is our first apartment living together and like first year like celebrating Christmas together like as one household. So I wanted to make it special. Um, and these have not been blocked yet, but this is my boyfriend's, he wanted a, the snowman, I'm trying to get that in the full shot there, the snowman pattern. Um, this is by Annie's Woolens. If you look her up on Ravelry, she's known for stockings. Um, I bought her entire ebook with all of her stocking patterns in them. Um, and I let my boyfriend pick out the snowman. He loved that one the most. Um, so after I block them, I'm gonna put Mike right here and I'll put Mare for mine. Um, this one is mine. This one I just finished recently. Just wanted a traditional snowflake pattern. Um, I love the little holly leaves, how you can see the red little berries throughout. I just love that so much. So I'm gonna put M-E-R-E -E for Mer Meredith um, right here. Let me know, do y'all, I don't really, I guess I don't have a preference or I haven't really heard of any preference, but should I wash and block these before doing the duplicate stitch for the name or should I just do that right now and then wash and block them together? Will it make that big of a difference? Will the colors bleed into the white? I don't know. Uh, so if you have any insight on that, I would love to hear it. But yeah, love these. Oh, and the yarn I used is by Shepherd's Wool. Um, well, I guess it's by Stonehenge Fiber Mill Fibers, um, but they're worsted weight yarn. It's 100% wool, um, and it's Shepherd's Wool is the name of the worsted line that they have. So these are the three colors, 
And these are the only skeins that I've used for both. I bought two of each color and I didn't even have to use the second set because I have all, this is all the yarn I still have left over from knitting both stockings um, with just three, these three skeins of yarn. I was so amazed by that. Um, I, thought, I thought for sure I would have less yarn than this left over, but prove me wrong. But I love this stuff by the way, just, oh, love it, love it, love it. I bought it at McKinney Knittery before I moved to Austin. Um, and I've knit a whole sweater out of it. Um, I've got backups of it. I, I just, they also have a great fingering weight. Um, this is just one of my favorite yarns. It's 100% wool, but it's so soft, so soft. It does color work beautifully. It feels great in your hands. Um, and fun fact, this is the yarn that Ralph Lauren used to make the Winter Olympic uniforms. Um, I want to say Sochi, Sochi Olympics. I don't remember when. In the early 2000s. So just a little fun fact. I'm sure you can Google that to find out more information because I just kind of butchered my history there a little bit. But yeah, super great yarn. Okay, next up, I reach over here. I'm a huge sock knitter. Um, and so I knitted a pair of these little kind of rainbow socks. Um, this is just a basic ribbed pattern. Um, you can kind of see that. And then I stop the ribbing at the foot and just carry the pattern across the top of the foot here. Um, this is just kind of one of my vanilla socks, so to speak. I don't follow a pattern. I just know 68 stitches on a size one needle is my go-to. And I typically like about 20 rounds of, excuse me, two by two ribbing um, up at the top before starting whatever pattern I choose. So, and then I did an afterthought heel. Um, gives it that cool like bullseye effect that I just love having that on the heel. They don't match. I didn't make the heels match because I didn't want to have to waste a bunch of yarn to get to the right pattern repeat of this one. This was the second one. So I said, screw it. I'm just going to use what I have. And it worked out great. I kind of like it. Um, a little, little uh, design element, if you will. Um, you know, I have a lot of socks that are perfectly matched, you know, from one pair to the next down to the heel and the toe and everything. Um, but I just kind of felt like switching it up. The, the body matches, which is good enough for me. No one's going to really see the heel except me. Um, this yarn is Lollipop Yarns. Um, <clears throat> I want to say this was an 80-20 blend, uh, super wash wool and nylon. Uh, I don't remember exactly what name. It was like, we used to carry her yarn at the shop too. It was like in a gobstopper form, really cool. Um, and they would sell out so fast. But I just remember this uh, ball of yarn was just sitting on the shelf for months and months. It was the only one left from Lollipop Yarns. And I was like, you know what, before I moved to Austin, screw it. I'm going to buy this and make a pair for myself. I love it, love it, love it. And it's fun. It's kind of, it's better to see it on the bottom, but you can kind of see how the color, it has like a solid color. And then it has this like flecked pattern, um, speckled uh, color next to it. So it kind of, it still carries that rainbow order. Um, but every other one is a solid and then a speckle, solid, speckle, solid, speckle. So super fun. Alrighty. Um, the last section of knitting is going to be this current, it's not an FO, it's a whip, but I'm going to show it to you anyways, because I love it so much. This is Practical Magic is the colorway name and it's by Nomadic Yarns, Nomadic I always want to say nomadic knitter, nomadic yarns. <laughs> she is the, you know, self-striping queen in my opinion. Uh, huge fan of her. She has been known for her big like Harry Potter colorways. And then she also just does a lot of uh, movie themes, pop culture themes. Um, and I really like the, the, the way her yarn feels. It's good quality. The stripes are so perfectly even. It's amazing. It's impeccable. So, and I love the movie Practical Magic. It's one of my favorite Halloween movies. I actually just watched it last weekend. Um, so yeah, this is it caked up. So I'm gonna have just, this is just a vanilla sock pattern. Again, 68 stitches, size one cable. 
I always knit my socks magic loop. Um, I will probably do an afterthought heel with the same yarn um, like the previous one. So that's that. Okay, moving on from the knitting, we're gonna get into quilting. So um, let me show you uh, this really fun block of the month that pattern that I've been working on. Okay, so the pattern is like a tattoo quilt. I actually think that's the name, tattoo quilt, by Happy So Lucky. Um, that's her handle, the designer's handle. Um, so this was a quilt along that kind of sparked, was, was sparked on, sparked on, brought on by Tula Pink. Um, in one of her Instagram videos, she was doing a, I think it was kind of like a mini tour of her uh, sewing room, her work area and whatnot. And she had on a design wall behind her sewing machine, she was working on this tattoo quilt um, pattern. And that just set off a ton of us viewers were like, what is that? That is awesome. Um, and it was just a total color explosion because she was using her own uh, fabric. Um, and if you know Tulip Pink, it is bright, bright, bright. It's great. Um, so Pink Door Fabrics is where I got my like quilt kit block of the month subscription from. Um, but there were so many other uh, stores who just got on that bandwagon, bandwagon real fast and decided to create kits and make this subscription, um, a monthly subscription block of the month club. So um, I did not do Tula Pink. I did Alice in Glass, which I just, I don't know, I like, I like her fabric overall just as much as Tula. Don't get me wrong. I just felt like sometimes the Tula Pink was a little too busy, I guess, for me with the certain fabrics that they were selecting for this pattern. Um, and I just kind of liked more of the jewel tones that the Alice in Glass pattern offered. So this is the first uh, block of the month. I think this was technically July or August. I kind of can't keep track, but I subscribed. I joined in the middle of the summer. This is the truth block. Um, and this is all foundation paper piecing, I should add that. Um, it's a whole different animal of quilting, um, but I really, really like it. I, already, I did have some experience with foundation paper piecing a couple years ago. I made like a little, what, do you, what would you call it? Um, like a little mini, mini quilt. I made a mini quilt of a sewing machine that used foundation paper piecing, a super cool kind of rainbow themed sewing machine. Um, I think I got the pattern off of Craftsy back in the day. I don't know if it's still on there, but um, I made my mom a mini quilt that she could hang in her sewing room because she is a huge sewer and quilter, bigger than I am. Um, and so that was my first, uh, you know, first dive into the foundation paper piecing world. So this, it's still hard because I typically uh, fly by the seat of my pants when it comes to foundation paper piecing. I don't measure out every little block and cut out that exact amount of fabric that I'm going to use um, like this pattern required me to because every month you get said just the right amount of fabric to make that block for the month. Um, very little left over for you. So um, precision is key <laughs> to this but it's been a huge growing experience for me. I have enjoyed every minute of it. There's really only one block that irritated me uh, and I had to make um, a couple, had to use my seam ripper and rip out a few mistakes, but I really like this one. Um, this was again, the truth block. And then the second month, this may be my favorite so far, is this hope block. Um, I actually have swallow tattoos on the tops of my feet. So maybe that's why I love this one the most, but it's super fun. And again, you can kind of see that Alice in Glass fabric in there. It's just kind of more minimal, um, but I love it, love it, love it. And then this block, I actually just sewed up this afternoon. Um, this was September's block, I think. And it's the love block. <laughs> there we go. So uh, this one was a bit of a pain um, in some areas. There's some Y seams all kind of around 
the shaping of the heart here that were not fun and I had to rip out twice. But I learned from my mistakes and didn't do it again. So uh, never really done Y seams before. I know that quilters typically avoid them like the plague because they're a pain. But I just went for it guys. It's the only way to do it step by step. So I think I did a decent job. They're not perfect. You know, this one is, you can kind of see a little puckering, a little wonkiness, but it's not bad overall. And once it's on the, once it's quilted, you won't be even, you won't be able to tell at all. Okay. So that was, again, that's the tattoo quilt pattern by Happy So Lucky. You can, I believe she sells mainly on Etsy. Um, but you can buy the blocks individually there, or I believe she has an option to buy the whole quilt pattern there too. So that's that. Next up, we have this project just, y'all, it's been so frustrating. I liked it at first when I started it like three years ago, uh, and then I, put it down and never picked it back up again. And now I'm not super in love with it anymore. But so it's a coffee mug quilt. This is one of the blocks. Um, it's the pattern is in from the cold is the name of it. And it's a free pattern on the Moda website. So it's just a little lap quilt, but you just make like nine coffee mug blocks and then um, stitch them all together. So I, I decided to do this just using scrap fabric, scrap uh, holiday fabric. I like this one, but just, I don't know. This is, I did four of them and then I just kind of gave up. So there's that one. These are not pressed out by the way, so excuse the wrinkles. There's that one. It's fun, but like together they just, I don't feel like they look that great together anymore. So, yeah, I just got tired of it. I got tired of the pattern. Um, yeah, so I don't know, you guys. Should I finish it? Should I not? I'm kind of tempted just to stop now and maybe sew the four blocks together side by side and make like a, like a little table runner, maybe. Or just make a wall quilt and put it up on in my sewing room um, during Christmas time. Maybe, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about that. <sighs> is it just me or does anybody else get, you know, I feel like half the time when I start a project, I just love starting it, but I also just want the finished product too. I hardly ever, I'm not a, what do they call it? I'm not a process crafter or knitter quilter I am a product knitter quilter and half the time I get bored when I, after I have started a project and I just want to put it down or I just plot through it to finish it but when it comes to stuff like this because I'm not actually I'm following a pattern but I'm not following any instructions on the fabric and that's where like I realized I don't really like doing that very much I'm, this wasn't a good scrap project I think looking back I should have stuck with a theme of, or a collection of fabrics that all go together. Um, I think that would make me happier with this. But, so, I don't know, I'm just gonna, I just called it a day, I'm gonna stitch them together and either hang it up on the wall or it's gonna be a seasonal table runner. <clears throat> okay, and then also, I made a um, project bag out of um, some Halloween fabric that I had in a mini charm square stack. Um, and uh, yeah, it's on uh, black canvas on the bottom. And then I just did just white muslin quilting cotton fabric on the inside. Nothing fancy, there's no pockets or anything, but um, it's a great little project bag. It can hold about two to three skeins of yarn. Um, and then I did my new Etsy shop's name. Uh, there we go, Moon Blossom Fibers, a little tag there. Um, yeah, so I just fell in love with this fabric. Look at this, got the ghosties. Look at all that, look at that, I love that. She's got her little Halloween costume on, she's got her pumpkins in the back, and I think there's a little 
maybe a brother's a vampire and alligator head over here, worms. It's just super fun. It's super just nostalgic Halloween to me. Um, love it, love it, love it. This is available in my Etsy shop, Moon Blossom Fibers. I will put the link down below. There's just one of these available. So if this is calling your name, you know where you can buy it. Uh, and then in that same vein, I started making a new uh, bag uh, with some holiday Christmas um, mini charm squares. So this is just the first kind of panel, um, like at the top of this bag here for the Halloween fabrics. It's Christmas. Um, here's the other one. So I can't decide if I'm going to do red canvas or black canvas, or I don't know about green canvas, but maybe, or maybe a light, I don't know if I could get light blue canvas, or maybe just a natural cream colored canvas. I'll also take your opinions on that below. Leave a comment, let me know. What, what do you think when you see this, what fabric on the bottom of the bag, what, what color should that canvas be? Let me know. And then I may do something fun on the inside I'm not sure yet. I may do a fun little print though on the inside for the lining. So we'll see. But yeah, this will also be up in my shop soon as well. Uh, okay. Next, we're going to move on to acquisitions. So for, gosh, y'all, I can't believe it. This is almost October, but I'm here. I am talking about visiting home for Labor Day weekend. It is what it is. So went home for our Labor Day weekend back in Dallas and, um, of course, got into a little, a little damage with the pocketbook, going a little shopping, shopping. Uh, me and my mom went to um, Urban Spools one day whenever we were there. And um, it's a really good um, quilting shop if you're in the Dallas area. They've changed, changed ownership since I have been there last. Um, they're now, I think, more heavily focused on selling um, baby lock sewing machines. They're an official dealer. So I felt like the, stop, the shop was set up a little differently than I remember. To me, they've kind of made more room for the sewing machines and kind of pulled back on the fabric, which kind of, it disappointed me. But if you're really wanting to be more of it like a sewing machine center, um, especially for baby lock, this would be your place now. But I did pick up some Halloween fabric. Oh, little fat quarters. Um, so I had been wanting the spooky and sweet line. Um, don't ask me who makes that. I want to say art gallery fabrics, but I could be wrong. But it's super cute Halloween fabric. I have a couple little pieces of it, but every time I just, I waited too long. I should have pulled the trigger sooner when I saw it come online for a nice fat, fat quarter set. But I didn't. So I did kind of make my own bundle here from what fabrics they had in it. So really uh, pretty like pastel purple. I got some candy canes or candy canes, candy corns. My goodness, wrong holiday. Um, this is kind of like a cute little uh, like a graveyard scene. Let me move the tag a little bit. You kind of see that. Love this one. Little witch's boots. We got a little little bat and um yeah just all sorts of cute little things cauldron hat what would that be a uh, crystal ball future ball whatever crystal ball i guess we have orange so it's just like the purple i got another one of this uh for the little graveyard set it's just too good of a the background color i just really like that um, and then these little brooms, super fun. So that, I believe these are all in the Spooky and Sweet collection. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but they all go together. So they will be something together. Um, oh, one more, forgot about this one. This one, again, let me pull this tag off. Super cute. I have to just open this one up for you to see everything. So it's like a little village, a trick-or-treaters, pumpkins, ghosties, trees. I want to say there was another print in this collection that was on a darker background. Um, here we go. 
So uh, I want to say there was one on that like kind of dark gray charcoal -y background with um, this similar print on it. I could be wrong though. But this one is so fun. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. And then some Halloween fabrics that are not part of the Spooky and Sweet collection. I believe this is a Riley Blake Halloween fabric that recently came out. I don't know the line. But those cute little spiders. Um, and then this one is also from Riley Blake, I believe. And I want to say it's like her like mother goose or fairy tales or something. I want to say it's like something geese, mother goose like line. And they made it kind of spooky Halloween this year. Um, I think that's from this. Again, I could totally be wrong, you guys. But I just thought that was a super fun fabric. Oh, let me look at the... Perhaps I should look at the thing. Okay, so it is Riley Blake, but it is the Costume Maker's Ball. So I don't think it's part of that Mother Goose line, but it kind of looks like it could all be in there. So that's, that's the line of fabric. Again, yeah, October 31st. Just... Just cool stuff. Perhaps I should show you right side up. So, yeah. Um, so that's all we got. Let's, let's, that's, no, wait. That is not all I got at Urban Schools. I also got this super cute, this was, it was like $3. It was majorly discounted in clearance. Um, this cute little Christmas bunting. Um, if I can open it up. So you cut it out and then you string them all together and it says Merry Christmas and you've got Santa, you've got elves, you've got a Christmas tree, um, the whole bit. So I thought that would be fun. I guess it looks like I have to get my own backing for the triangle bunt buntings. <laughs> I don't know what you call those. Um, so, and I may do some interfacing, maybe to make it a little sturdier. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to string that together, and I may just put it above my window here, above my sewing area. Um, I know from this perspective, it looks like a very boring spare bedroom, and that part it is. But what you don't see in front of me <laughs> is my sewing machine, and my yarn collection, my TV, my workspace over here, my cutting board, and everything like that. So, um, and I have a huge window that I'm recording in front of for good lighting. So I may string that along the window. We'll see. So there's that. So then after Urban Spools, mom and I were like, well, that was fun, but we kind of wanted to do a little more shopping. We were kind of a little bit disappointed in the fabric selection that we remembered from Urban Spools before they changed owners. So I said, okay, well, I know a good shop, North Dallas in the McKinney area. Um, called Stitched, Stitched with Love. And I went there right when they first opened, I guess it was a couple years ago. Um, it was a cute shop, but they were still kind of getting everything set up. Um, so I just kind of forgot about them for a little bit. But uh, I was like, well, let's just pop in there um, and let's just go make a day of it. So we went up there and y'all, pleasantly surprised. They have got it down. They got the name of the game up there. If you want all of the cutest, trendiest, modern quilting fabrics and patterns that have come to market, you need to go there because they're on top of it. Like everything that I've seen that's super trendy on all of the major websites and on Instagram and everything like that, they got it. So <clears throat> I didn't go crazy in there as much as I wanted to. <laughs> but so uh, I only, I, I didn't really get much. My mom got more than me. Um, she got like a whole quilt set entirely um, out of flannel fabric, which was kind of neat. But I did get two of the Rifle Paper Primavera. Yeah. Yeah, Primavera is the newest line that they did in the summer. Cute little pineapples with that gold foil fabric. And then this is just little strawberries. There's no gold, but it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? But I just love any rifle paper company that I can get my hands on. And they only had a little bit left because it's been selling out majorly. Um, so I got those. And then I also got a fat quarter. 
Um, this is Hindsight, I believe, um, by Anna Maria Horner. <sighs> Love me some Anna Maria Horner. Um, one of my faves. Let me open this up for you to get the full effect here. No! Look at this beauty. It's so pretty. I am a sucker for bright colors, y'all. And this got me. So, um, I, it just had to come home with me. Um, I have a lot of Anna Maria Horner's fabric, so I don't really need m any more of hers, but I didn't have this one, so I really wanted it. Okay, and then they also had um, this super cute maker necklace. Uh, I normally don't buy this kind of stuff. I think it's a little too kitschy for me. I'm just kind of like, ah, I don't know. It looks cool on someone else, but never on me kind of thing. Um, but I thought that was super neat. I like the writing of it and it was by the register and I just was already triggered. So I was like, that's got to come home with me. The, the impulse buying, it got me. So see it right there. Hmm. So anyways, that was my purchase from Stitch with Love. And then lastly, on another day when I was home, I went up to McKinney with a girlfriend of mine to go visit McKinney Notary. Um, the shop that I used to work at and they started selling, well, they've done a lot. They've moved into a new space that's like twice the size or four times the size, really. Um, it's huge. And they have added in fabric. So I kind of wanted to check it all out. That's all happened since I've been, um, since I've moved. So I just kind of wanted to pop in, pay them a visit. And of course I came home with some goodies. So some fabric that I got. Still feeling the, ha the Halloween theme here. I loved this. I believe this is a Moda fabric. I think both of these are um, in their Halloween line. But I loved, love, love, love this little plaid design here with the orange, black, and cream. And then this is just adorable. I think it says trick or treat, so my feet, give me something good to eat, you know, that little rhyme. Uh, so yeah, those came home with me and those are both fat quarters. I'm a fat quarter kind of girl, in case you didn't notice. I also came home with Moda's, uh, what is this, the Swell Christmas, I believe, or something like that. I'm not good with remembering kind of names, you guys. If you really want to, I could put them down in the comments below, but Google can serve you well. So here's a uh, adorable little Santa Claus, love, love, love. And then I got a snowman. And then we have a blue snowman. <laughs> and then this cute, um, it, it, was, it was in the Christmas line, but I feel like it can be almost summery too. It's very watermelony to me, but um, I think it was with like a poinsettia line. Um, so yeah, love those. And then I got um, a Melody Miller uh, fabric. What is this? Her Clementine line, I believe. So, how to have it. And then, I did get some yarn. Uh, if you know me, I'm a purple kind of gal. And this just, I was standing near the register, ready to check out. And then I turned around and I saw the wall of Madeline Tosh. Which normally I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But then I was like, oh wait, they've totally, I haven't really seen their stuff in person since they've been like taken under the Jimmy Bean's wool house, so to speak. And this is, I believe this is a new colorway called Wino Forever. Look at that, you guys. Oh my God. I just love it. Love it. I like the big specks of that kind of darker, almost black flex right in here a little bit. But then you also get this like electric violet and then just, just this like plummy purple fuchsia color. Oh, it's like... That's, it's showing up pretty good on camera, but it's so bright. I was kind of worried that the color would blow out, but it's getting, it's picking it up pretty well. Oh, I love it so much. So this is their, um, oh yeah, cool label. Well, oh, kind of they redid their label and everything like that. This is the Twist Light. This is um, one of my favorite yarns to make socks with as well. It's 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon, so. Well done, Mad Tosh. I'm, I'm impressed with the changes that I've seen and the new colorways were super fun. <clears throat> I also got 
from uh, Blue Mule Fiber. <clears throat> Excuse me, I always want to like flip flop their name for whatever reason, but Blue Blue Mule Fiber. <laughs> They're out in Fayette, Texas, which is actually only about an hour outside of Austin where I live. Um, and this was like a Halloween line. They had like two or th I want to say three different Halloween sets at the shop, um, all paired with a little mini skein for alternating heel cuff toes. And this is called, um, this one is called Hocus Pocus, y'all. <laughs> and this one is called um, Midnight Texas. And um, this blend for the sock is 85% extra fine superwash merino and 15% nylon. Okay. Uh, 100 grams, 438 yards. Very typical. And then the mini, it's, I don't know if you can see that. It's got Stellina in it. There's a little bit. It's got some glitter, a little sparkle. And it's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. So um, let me just show y'all a little bit more. If I can get this off to show you without totally taking it off. Look at that. Oh, it's so fun. It's so Halloween, so fall. I just love it. So that, of course, had to come home with me. Plus, I like supporting Texas Dyers. And then one of my favorites. You can't go wrong with Magpie, y'all. You just can't. The Swanky DK and the Swanky Sock are probably the most luxurious, but like workhorse of yarn that you can use for a sweater that's got cashmere in it. And it's just, oh, it's, it's plump, it's juicy, it's shiny, it's soft. It's like butter, okay? You can't go wrong with it. It's amazing. Um, and I love, love, love this yarn for, I have a couple hats in this yarn. And this year I wanted to have a purple hat because it's my favorite color. And I just loved the, just the dynamics of the color with this. I don't know if you're seeing that on camera, but like it just is almost like iridescent in some spots of it. Um, you get kind of that blush pink with the violet and then like a nice plum just all wrapped up together. So this is 80% superwash merino 10% cashmere, hey, 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 and then 10% nylon. It gives you a little durability there. So 80, 10, 10 blends are so good, but I've never felt one like as soft as this, honestly. I've never combined 80, 10, 10 as soft as the Magpie Swanky line. So good. Again, they have this, this is the DK, but they also have it in the sock weight. Um, and these two, you do have a little bit of a price increase on this. Um, this goes for $36 a skein. Um, where I feel like, you know, for example, the Mad Tosh goes for $26.50. Um, there's a difference though. There's a difference in quality, difference in feel, and um, yeah, it's just so good with the cashmere. Oh, it's so delicious. Okay, guys, I think that is everything. Thanks for sticking with me and riding along here for my first craft podcast. Um, I think that's it. Um, if y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, if there's anything you want me to talk about more, please leave a comment below, click subscribe, um, stay tuned. And, uh, if you haven't already seen, I do have some other candle reviews on my channel. Um, crafts and candles. Those are two of my biggest loves. <laughs> I've always been obsessed with as a kid, uh, with like anything that smells good and colors and just patterns, design, and scents. <laughs> so that kind of wraps me up as a whole. I love bright fabric. I love bright yarn. I love cool funky fabrics and patterns. And I love, love, love candles. I'm always burning a candle. Today I've got Cider Lane by Bath and Body Works going, which I may do a review on later. Who knows? But if you like any of that, please subscribe and uh, come join me on this YouTube journey. 